In this video, we're going to use our block, skirt block, to create a skirt variation that has these two pairs of tucks coming up to the waistband here. So we're going to use tucks to create the design element, but they'll also be adding fullness to the skirt. So I've drawn, I've got my block here, and I've drawn on two lines that we'll be following to create that volume for our tuck. So this line extends up here from the centre front waist down here to the hem. And then this line I've extended from this arm of the dart all the way down to the hem again down there. So I'm going to use the pivoting technique to open these and to create the dart shaping on the waist. So I've folded my paper so that I end up with an all-in-one pattern and I'm going to place it right on the fold here, making sure I have enough room down here as well as up here. Now I am tracing it to the first tuck, so to here, and just to this mark up here and down there. Now what we need to do is to decide how much fullness we're adding into each of these, tarts, these tucks. So here I'm going to add, I think, five centimetres into there and then five centimetres into there. So using the ruler, I'm marking five centimetres from this point. Now I'm pivoting all the way from the hem and I'm going to pivot that open to that five centimetre mark there and place the weight back on. And now I'm tracing from here to here and here to here. Now we repeat that process for this section here. We're going to make sure we've added five centimetres across the top. Actually, we need to think about this dart at this stage of the process. So what I'm going to do is to measure five centimetres across from that arm of the dart and mark that in here, like that. And then when we pivot it, we're going to pivot it to this point here. And replace the weight. Oh, I've moved it a little bit on the bottom, so this point needs to come back in line with the hem, and then that is sitting in position better. And now I trace around here. Now, looking back at here, you can see that the tucks are coming in this direction. So that there's a fullness coming into there and there. So we need to mark here the direction that those tucks will go as a reminder. Now the next step is that we create the shaping at the top of the tucks here. So we need to hold from these two points where we've pivoted from on the hem. So I'll start now I have my paper folded, but at this stage, to when I'm folding and manipulating the paper, I'm just using this top one. I won't worry about that under paper until we get to copying the second side. So folding from here. So let's fold it down to this point. So we've got that fold line in, and now we're taking this fold line across to here. 
And you can see there's a little bit out of alignment. That's okay, because we're going to make that adjustment and smooth that over. So I'm going to place a pin in it here. And then we repeat the same thing using this line. So folding from the waist down to the hem. If you would like, you could transfer these lines that you've drawn on the block onto the pattern to follow them. And now we repeat the same process. So we're folding this point onto this point here. I don't need to fold it all the way down, just enough at the top to make sure that my tuck position is in line. Okay, now I'm just going to smooth this junction. When you're creating tucks in a block like this and you find that this position comes out of alignment, the more angle you have in the tuck, the more out of alignment that will be, then you need to choose a point in between the two to smooth it across. Like that. Then to get the shaping on the top of the tucks, you'll be using your tracing wheel and tracing across. Now we unpin it. And follow the pin marks. like that. And we can start by adding seam allowance now. We need to label the tucks as well. If these are not labelled as tucks, the makers might think that they're darts and waste time looking for a drill hole down here to indicate the end of their dart. So we need to make sure we communicate clearly what they are, that they're tucks, and also the direction that they're sewn in. Now, with the seam allowance across the top here, we need to be even more careful than usual to make sure that we follow the shape that we've created by tracing the top of the tucks. And then the 12 mils down the side. transferring the tuck so you see the angle that I have my ruler on I'm following the angle of the tuck to create the position for the notch so I'm not straightening them so not this one here Right, now your pattern, uh, we need our hip notch transferred over. And you can see along here, there's a little curve that's been created by opening it and pivoting down here. And so we need to also make sure that we're following that curve when we add our 12 mils seam allowance or hem allowance on the bottom of the skirt pattern. So now the pattern is ready to pin and cut out so that we have a completed front skirt panel. Okie dokie. Now I've finished cutting out the pattern. I've added the seam allowance all the way around and I've transferred the notches from here to the other side. So even though our pattern is symmetrical, we want to make sure that we mark all of the tucks on in the correct direction that they're folding and I've transferred the hip notch across as well as the hem notch 
and I've completed the labelling. The numbering is the only thing that I haven't done because that's something that would be done once the entire pattern is finished.